Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise, and to give him all the glory. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and every last one of us should always be glad and always rejoice in it. We serve an awesome God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne, who still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Every day is a day for every last one of us to draw closer to the Lord. And as you draw closer to him, he's going to draw closer to you. The Lord is so amazing, so wonderful, so faithful. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing too difficult for him. There's nothing he can't do. He got everything worked out according to his perfect will. And we all go through things. We all are facing something. It doesn't matter what it is. It don't matter how small it is, how big it is. We all are facing something. But it doesn't matter what you're facing. Just take it to the Lord. Talk to him about the situation. Because he's the only one that can help you out of the situation. Facebook cannot help you out of the situation. Instagram cannot help you out of the situation. TikTok cannot help you out of the situation. YouTube cannot help you out of the situation. Your parents cannot help you out of the situation. Your homeboys, your homegirls cannot help you out of the situation. The people in the church cannot help you out of the situation. The only person that can help you out of the situation because he knows best and he knows everything about you. He knows how to do it. He knows how to work it out. And his name is Jesus. So whatever it is that's going on with you right now today, whatever it is that you are facing right now today, take it to the Lord. Don't second guess him, my sisters. Don't you dare second guess him, my brothers. Take it to the Lord because he knows what's going on. He know how to operate the whole show. He don't even need your help. Take it to him right now today. That's why I'm always encouraging my brothers and sisters that praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing. It's not a seasonal thing. It is an everyday thing because the God we serve, the God we praise, he watches over every last one of us and he happens in the palm of his hands and he is working everything God to his perfect will. Oh yes, he's working it out. You can invest your last dollar on that. He is working it out. Amen? Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And if you have not welcomed the Lord into your home or even to your life or even your prayer closet room, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, I want to encourage you right now today. Please do so. Please return back to your first love. His arms are open wide. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, how you guide us and directing us. We thank you, Father God, how you're going to put us at the right place at the right time. We just thank you, Father God, that we all come together, Father God, as brothers and sisters, Father God, in your house today, in your sanctuary today, Father God. Exalt your holy name. Magnify your holy name and always put you first place. We just thank you, Father God, because today is the day that you have made. And we are so glad to be a part of it and always rejoice in it. We just thank you, Father God, for all the beautiful and amazing things that you have done today, what you are doing today. We thank you, Father God, for this day, Father God, because it's an awesome day just to be in your presence, just to be in your house, Father God, and for us to continue to pick up our crosses, Father God, and follow you, God. And Father God, even though it's difficult, even though, Father God, we might not see anything, God, but we still trust in you, Father God. 
We are still holding on, Father God, to your unchangeable hands because you are so amazing, Father God, and we thank you for it, God. We glorify you, Father God. We thank you. Father God, we just thank you, Father God. Oh, Father God, allow your love to move through this place. Allow your presence to move through this place. I know our head right now today, Father God, fill our cup up right now today, Father God, that they continue to overflow, Father God. Oh, Father God, we just thank you, Father God. Fill us up right now today, Father God, with more of your love right now today. Oh, Father God, we know that you're about to show up. We know for a fact that you're about to show out. Let your words go out and she not return by boy today, Father God. Allow your love to move to this place. Allow your presence to move to this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place right now. I believe and I declare, I decree right now today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to give their life over to you right now today, Jesus, and the angels are rejoicing in heaven right now, and you will, and you shall get all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory, God, hallelujah. Over him, the Father God, this is your house, the house that you built on solid ground, the house that you built on solid foundation, the house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, you are welcome right now, you're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord, right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here in my brother's homes. Right here in my brother's life. Right here in my sister's homes. Right here in my sister's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today, Father God, to open our eyes right now today, Father God. Let us see what we need to see from you right now today. Open our ears, Father God, so we can hear from you right now today, Father God. Oh, Father God, fill us up, Father God, with more of your love right now today. I'm asking you, Father God, to speak a word to us right now today. Enlighten us right now today, God. Continue to make sure that our lamp continue to burn, Father God. Oh, Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, for a blessing and for a breakthrough for my brothers and sisters. And I'm praying, Father God, for that miracle for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, Father God, and I'm asking, Father God, for you to open up some doors for my brothers and sisters. I'm praying, I'm asking, Father God, that you put my brothers and sisters, Father God, at the right place at the right time. I'm praying, I'm asking, Father God, that you better do some amazing things in their life for another day, Father God. And, Father God, I believe that it's done. I declare that it's, that it's done. And I'm in agreement right now today, Father God. And I know for a fact that it is done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord. Right here in your sanctuary. Right here on your YouTube channel. Right here in my, in my sister's homes. Right here in my sister's life. Right here in my brother's home. Right here in my brother's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now today because you are comforter. I'm asking you right now today to control our thoughts, control our minds so we hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to move through this place like you never moved before. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to enlighten us right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do some things like you never done before right now. Holy Spirit, you are in control. You are in charge in this house right now today. Please forgive us for grieving you today, Holy Spirit. As we repent of our sins today, please forgive us for our sin today, Jesus. Known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiveness for our sin. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the understanding. Thank you, Father God, for always being there for us, Father God. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored, how blessed I am to always pray, praise, and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, and one body in Christ today. Heavenly Father God, I'm here today to let you know that I'm available for praise. I'm available for service. I'm available for the kingdom of most of all, Jesus, that I'm available for you. Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you, I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's that's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and I shout at your holy name the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my heart at you every day, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, G, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, G, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Glory, hallelujah. 
I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. And I know in this season, it's been uncomfortable for you. And I know in this season, your eyes has opened. In this season, you have seen things that you never thought that you was ever going to see. In this season, God was there with you as you was going through what you was going through in this season. But God had to show you what you were dealing with. God had to show you who was against you and not for you. God had to show you who was the real and who was the fake and phony. God had to show you who really loved you and who was using you. God had to show you what the real deal about. And right now, God got you at the very, very bit of the valley. And in the valley, it's all alone. Nobody wants to go through the valley. Everybody want to be on top of the roof. Everybody want to be on top of the mount. But nobody wants to go through the valley. But God had to take you to the valley this season, my sisters. God had to take you to the valley in this season, my brothers. Because y'all was around some people who you thought was real. Y'all was around some people who y'all thought was loyal. Y'all was around some people who thought that they really cared about you. But God had to enlighten you and to show you who you thought was real, who you thought was loyal. They were faking for them all along. And now, as you in that valley, you're starting to see things. God had to open your eyes because you lost some things. And as you were losing things, oh, heaven, this thing, Jesus, you was also losing so-called friends too, wasn't you? You was also losing so-called family members too, right? You were also losing so-called boyfriends, so-called girlfriends, so-called fiancés, so-called husbands, so-called wife. You was losing but God had, God had to allow that to happen because you was putting too much faith and trust in these people who didn't have faith in you, who didn't have trust in you, but most of all, they didn't have you back. They didn't have you back whatsoever. And now you remember when you was dead broke, who was there for you to give you a couple of dollars just to get you a sandwich. You remember when you ain't had no place to stay, but all these people who you say was your friends, who you say that they keep it real with you, they didn't allow you to sleep on their couch. You remember when you can't get back and forth to work when it was pouring down rain outside, when these people who you said was your friends that you have to get a job, they'll sit there and blow the horn at you while you had to bust up, while you getting soaking wet. You Now you remember when you was on top, how you was looking out for people. How you was there for people. Now that you don't lost some things, and now the the table don't the tables have turned, and now they doing their thing. Now they looking down on you. Now they back pass on you. Now they talking bad about you. Now you see it, right? But God had to allow that to go down for you to see what was going on. But He had to allow that to go down because He is telling you right now today, my sisters. He is telling you right now today, my brothers, that at some point that you're going you to come out on top. You might be in the valley right now. You might be hurting right now. You might be suffering right now. But in the next season, because it will be a next season, in the next season that you, my sisters, hallelujah, that you, my brothers, hallelujah, will be on top. And you're going to remember who was there for you when you ain't had nowhere to go, when you ain't had nowhere to eat, when you were suffering, when you were struggling, and they had every opportunity, they had every means to try to help you, but they picked at you, they laughed at you, they ridiculed you, and the whole time you were there for them when they was in the same situation as you, but when the tables were burst and it was their time to shine, they didn't consider you. They overlooked, they overlooked you, but God already knew that was gonna happen. But God had to prepare you, my sisters. He had to prepare you, my brothers, 
for you to see what was going on because you were too blind to the fact to see what was going on. You were too blind to the fact that to see that who you thought was real, who you thought was loyal, was never real in the first place. There was never loyal in the first place. They didn't want you to have no more than them. It's like crabs in a barrel. They were trying to pull you down. They didn't want you to get ahead. But God had to take you down to the bottom of the mountain. He had to take you down to the core of the valley. And as you were down there by yourself, you thought that you were down there by yourself. But God was there with you the whole time. God was there with you, you was hurting. God was right there with you, you was suffering. God was right there with you when you didn't have none to eat. God was right there, God was right there with you when you didn't have you didn't have bus for to get on the bus. God was right there with you when you didn't have a, when you didn't have a roof of your head. God was right there with you when you didn't have a vehicle. God was right there with you when you was behind no bills and you didn't know how you were gonna get out of that jam. God was with you the whole way. But when your friends was. Were they, with, were they with you? Well, your so-called boyfriend was. He took off, right? Well, your so-called girlfriend was. She took off, right? Well, your fiance was. He or she took off, right? Well, your husband, your wife was. The moment the storm come, now all of a sudden they want to separate. All of a sudden they don't want to, all of a sudden they want to be in a marriage. Well, your family members was. Well, your co-workers was. Everybody gone, right? Everybody deserted, right? I remember when I was down and out, who was there for me? I remember when I ain't have nothing to eat. Who was there for me? I remember when I was trying to get, when I was trying to get the A, trying to get the C. I remember who tried to try to fill in the gap to get the who was there trying to fill in the gap for the B to help me to get the C. I remember. I remember all that. And God wants you to remember. You already forgave him, but He wants you to remember because in the next season. You're going to be on top. And the same people that are doing you, doing you way how they doing you right now today in the valley, they're going to see you shine again. They're going to see you win again. They're going to see you prosper. They're going to be the same people going to want to sit there and say, oh, man, I know you was going to make it. Oh, man, I was rooting for you. But this is the season that you need to see who was for you and who was against you. In this season, you need to see who really cared about you and who didn't care about you. In this season, you need to see who really had your back and who didn't have your back. In this season, you got to see who really loved you or who was fake and phony saying that they loved you. You got to see it. And that's why God had to take you in the valley. Oh, you find what I'm saying right now? Is it making sense to somebody right now? Is the Lord talking to somebody right now? Because I know you're talking to somebody. Because I remember. I remember. When I was dead broke. I just needed a couple of dollars. To put some food in my house. I had all these so-called people say they cared about me. But where they was. When I needed something to eat. Where they was. When I needed a dollar here. A dollar there. Where they was. When I needed somewhere to stay. Where they was when I had my back against the wall. I need somebody to scratch my back after I don't scratch their. Where were they? I was looking for them. I couldn't find them. They didn't want to be bothered with me. Just like they don't want to be bothered with you. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Is the Lord making sense to you right now? Is he enlightening you right now today? Is your eyes starting to open up a little bit right now today? Come on, talk to me now. Talk to me, somebody. I know God talking to somebody right now. Are you following what I'm saying right now? Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to Psalms 23. And we're going to finish off at Proverbs 18 and 24. That's Psalms 23. We're going to read verse 4 and 5. And we're going to finish off at Proverbs 18, verse 24. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. I should not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Oh, help that thing right there, Jesus. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Ain't no need me fearing that when I'm already broke. There's no need to fear in that when I'm already struggling. There's no need to fear in that when I'm already behind. There's no fear in that when I'm already going through what I'm going through because somebody is going through it with me. I'm not all alone. So whatever it is that you're going through in this season, my sisters, whatever it is that you are going through in this season, my brothers, you're not going through it alone. The Lord is with you. God got your back. So that's why he had to take you to the valley so you can see what you need to see. He had to take you to the valley so you can understand what was going on, who was real, who was fake. God is with you even though you think that you're by yourself. He said, I'm with you even though your homeboy is not with you. God said, I'm still with you even though your homegirls is not that with you. God said, I'm still with you even though your so-called boyfriend don't took off. God said, I'm still with you even though your so-called girlfriend who said that she cared about you, who said that she loved you, she don't took you off. God said, I'm still with you even though that your fiance or your or your husband, your wife don't ran. God said, I'm still there with you even though that your brothers and sisters don't took off. God said, I'm still there with you even though that your family members don't took off. God said, I am with you even though when it seems like that you don't have nobody, but God said that you always got somebody because God said, I am with you and I will never leave you, hallelujah, nor forsake you. He said, I am with you and I got you. He said, you ain't got to fear nothing because it's going to be all right. He said, you ain't got to fear nothing because you're going to come out on top. He said, you ain't got to fear nothing because you're going to shine again. He said, you ain't got to fear nothing because you're going to smile again. You ain't got to fear nothing because I'm taking care of every last situation that you're going through. He said, you ain't got to fear nothing. You ain't got to worry about nothing because he said, I got you. And if you believe that God got you, say, you know what? God, I might be going through it right now, but I know for a fact that you got me. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you I know God I got you. Let's turn our Bible to Proverbs 18. And we're going to read verse 24. That's Proverbs 18. And we're going to read verse 24. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Glory be to God. A man of many companions may come to a ruin. But there's a friend who sticks closer then a brother. Oh, him with that thing, Jesus. A man of many companions. God said, at some point, it's going to come to an end. He said, at some point, it's going to come to a ruin. Why? Because God said, when you lose everything, you will see who your real friends are. When you lose everything, you will see who your real family members are. When you lose everything, you ain't got nothing to offer nobody, you ain't got nothing to give nobody, you will see who really cared about you. You will see who really loved you. You really see who was there for you. You will see who was against you the whole time. You will see who was play hating on you the whole time. You will see who was fake. You will see who was phony. You will see it when it all come down. And right now, you remember when you was down. You remember when you lost everything. You remember when you had two nickels to rub. Now, God had to take you to the valley just to see how many friends called you, said they were your friends, where they at now? God said, when it came to an end, where, where the so-called friends at? God said, when it came to an end, where your boyfriend was. God said, when it came to an end, where your girlfriend was. When it came to an end, where your fiancés was. When it came to an end, where your husband or your wife was. When it came to an end, where your family members was. God said, where they at when you're in the valley? God said, where they at when you're suffering? God said, where they at when you're struggling? God said, where they at when you, when you ain't got nowhere to stay? God said, where they at when you ain't got no food to put on your table? God said, where they at when you can't, you don't know how you put gas in your car? God said, where they at when you can't put food on your table? God said, where they at when you're robbing Peter trying to pay Paul? God said, where they at now? When it was your time, when you was when you was blessing people and looking out for people, it was all good. But then when the time came, when you can't bless them no more, when you ain't got nothing to give them, God said he had to put a stop to it because they was only using you for what you got and what you have. But God said, where they at now? Where they at now? They're like cats with a friendly ghost. They're gone, right? But somebody say, I'm still with you. 
no matter what. Even in Psalm 23, he say, I'm with you. Right here in Proverbs, God say, I'm with you. The point I'm making, as long as God is with you in this down season, in this hurting season, this next season, I believe and I declare right now today, I'm prophesizing this over all my brothers, all my sisters right now today. You're going to come out on top. You're going to come out better than what you're going through right now today. You are coming out on top. Do you believe that the Lord is talking to you right now today? Because I believe it and I declare it right now today in the mighty name of Jesus that you will come out on top, my sisters. That you will come out on top, my brothers. It's already done. It's already spoken for. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. And if you know God is talking to you and this word moved through today, say thank you, Jesus, because I'm coming out on top. I know that you're with me even though everybody walked out of my life. I know that you're with me even though people say that they cared about me. People say they love me. But God, nobody loves you, loves me like you do, Jesus. So, Father God, it doesn't matter what people did to me. As long as you are for me, I know for a fact that you always will be there for me. And as long as you are for me, that you with me, Jesus, that's all I need is you, Jesus. And I just want to say thank you. Glory be to God. And if this word moved through you today, and this word touched you today, go and hit Jesus' like button. Go and hit the subscribe button too as well. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. But I was praying a simple little prayer that God is already working everything God in our life for another day. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchangeable hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving in this LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.